and welcome to Out of the Dark Room on Adorama TV. I'm Ruth Medjbear and I'm here at Castle Palooza Music Festival. Today I'm going to be answering all those gear related questions you guys have been asking and I'm also going to talk you through what gear I use. Adorama TV presents Out of the Dark Room with Ruth Medjbear. So Chris Knight asks, given lighting colours change constantly, do you set a particular white balance, use auto white balance or shoot raw and try to get flesh tones or hand tweak white balance in post? Personally, I shoot an auto white balance and I've never ever had a problem with it. You won't really get a lot of mixed lighting when there's a stage, you know, when it's a stage setup, usually be all the same colour temperatures. I guess I'd probably change some tones uh, afterwards in post-production, but I probably wouldn't rely on it heavily. The biggest fear or the biggest challenge photographers will ever come across is red lighting. When you go to photograph a gig and the first three songs are all red, it's just so difficult. It doesn't react well in the camera. So if I'm faced with that, then yeah, I will rely on post-production to, to help me out of that crisis. But ordinarily, I just stick it on auto white balance and the camera knows what it's doing. It's the easier way around things. So here's a question from Deval. Deval says, most of the time when I shoot any music event or dance event, I face problems with lighting. Musicians, especially rock guitarists, move so quickly. I cannot shoot on lower shutter speeds and flashes are just not enough because of the distance from the stage. So he wants to know if I have any suggestions. Well, flash you can't use in a photographer's pit professionally. You're not allowed flash, flash is banned. It's very distracting for the artist. So just take it off your camera and say no to flash. Some of the times though, if I'm already working with the band, I can agree with them to use flash certainly at some points, but I'd always have to have permission from the band first. So if the lighting's really, really poor, I could take my camera off the flash, have it on a remote trigger and hide it somewhere around the back of the stage. That way when it pops off, it's not gonna annoy the band too much. It might annoy the crowd for a bit though, so I wouldn't tend to do it for more than like two or three flashes per show. Now, the only other way of getting around the lighting issue is to bump up your ISO, shoot at the fastest aperture you have. And as a general rule, I probably wouldn't shoot below an 80th of a second if I'm shooting musicians, because yes, they do move so fast around. So it really depends on the show. If it's a punk gig, I'm probably looking at like 250th of a second because I know that they're going to be jumping around like mad. If it's a solo, you know, a, a, a singer songwriter or someone that's quite stationary during the shoot, I could might even put, bring it down to about a 50th of a second and get away with it quite comfortably. So it really depends on the, on the scenario and on the band that's playing in front of you. Lighting is always an issue with music photographers, but the more you get out there and the more you shoot, the more you'll learn to deal with it all. And then, um, yeah, just try everything you can. Good lens, good ISO, and then see what you can do. So here's a nice broad question. What are your go-to exposure settings when shooting in dark venues? Okay, if I'm on a 1.4 lens, I'm shooting at 1.4. Not everyone will have such a fast lens. If you're using a kit, you might be only on 3.5 or 5.6. So open it up as fast as you can, shoot at the lower aperture. Um, and then I guess it depends on the camera, what ISO you're shooting at. If your camera can comfortably manage 2000, 4000 ISO, like my D4S can, then by all means shoot at it. If you notice that your camera kind of tends to fall apart over 800 ISO, then there's nothing you can do about that. Shoot the maximum where you're comfortable with your camera. And um, the best way to do that, go into a dark venue and um, to find out what your ISO, what your capable level is, go in, shoot over the range up to whatever you can manage and then bring it into Photoshop or onto Lightroom or something like that. Bring it into your computer, enlarge it and see the amount of noise at 800 or at 2000 or whatever the maximum you can reach up to. You'll notice some images just fall apart beyond 800 depending on your camera. And then in terms of shutter speed, I probably stick to around 125th. 125th of a second, but if the lights are so, so, so bad, then a 50th of a second, 60th of a second, 
really, again, depends on the amount of movement that's on stage. If they're quite slow and steady movement, I could even like move with the band. So I know this looks a little bit crazy, but when I'm shooting a band, if they're swaying, I tend to sway as well to keep with movement with them. So, I mean, it really depends on the situation. If you've got um, a guy that's jumping off an amp stack, you gotta be doing that at around 500th of a second to catch him midair. So it's quite a general question, but Let's just say, for example, sake, 125th of a second, 800 ISO, 1.4 in your aperture. So a lot of people come up to me and say, oh, I wish I had your camera, you know, this, that, and the other, and they're really gear envy, I suppose. Don't worry too much about the gear you have. Just concentrate on getting the best shots out of the camera that you already own. The only way that you can do that is by getting to know your camera. You know, you need to be shooting these gigs almost like automatically. Your finger should know where your aperture is. Your other finger should know where your shutter speed is. You should be reading that light meter inside your viewfinder the entire time. I mean, I shot the first few years of my professional career on a Nikon D70, which is quite an entry level camera. And I also used a kit lens for so, so long. I mean, you can make it work. You just have to be a little bit smart about it and know how to use your manual controls in that camera. So don't worry too much. If you haven't got a Nikon D4S, just go with what you have. Be quite confident and just learn as much as you can from watching tutorials and just getting to grips with your camera and shoot, shoot, shoot. The only way you'll ever get better at this is not by upgrading your gear, but by upgrading your knowledge. So just go practice, shoot, learn and enjoy it. Thanks for joining me on the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be bringing you back some more great videos. If you want to brush up on your own photography skills, check out the Adorama Learning Center where we post lots of great articles, tips and tricks. I'll see you again soon. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.